Hey everyone, I just have a quick tip for today. I just wanted to show you how to use MoGraph information to drive textures in Redshift. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a pretty basic MoGraph scene set up here and you can see we've got our cloner and our, some of our cubes and a linear field and it's just pushing the cubes up and down. So first things first, we need to tell MoGraph to give us some color information to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to our linear field, or no, our plane effector. Here's our linear field, and this switch may or may not be on by default, but make sure that's turned on. There you go. It's just using the color from your color remap here and putting it into uh, onto your cube. Let's go ahead and change this to a better looking color. I'm gonna go with like a blue, but it doesn't really matter. What happens when we render this? Let's see, what do we get? <laughs> and would you like that? It actually by default does work. But I'll tell you what, here's the thing. If I go ahead and throw down a Redshift material, or yeah, materials, Redshift. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this to cubes and drop that on. And now it's gone. To get the MoGraph color to work on the actual shader, we have to go into the shader. We've got our Redshift material. We're gonna go ahead and look for a new node. What do you call it? Utilities, user data, there we go. Um, so we want color user data. And for now, we're just gonna plug this into the color, the fuse color. Of course, it's gonna mess up our viewport. That's okay. Clicking on color data, we're gonna pick MoGraph, this little arrow here, uh, pick MoGraph color. And there it is, look at that. So now MoGraph is working right inside of Redshift. Cool stuff. Right now it's going from white to blue and we don't really have a control over the original color. Um, that's just because that's the default. So if we change our color mode from color to gradient, well now we have a little bit more control. So now we could say, all right, let's go with that blue again, because I like that color. And I don't know, let's say the original color is, let's go with like a yellow or something, maybe like a pale green. Let's go with pale green. Boom. Look at that. So now we actually have a lot of control over the colors in Redshift. And you can even do another cool thing about this is maybe you don't want to control the color, but maybe you want to control like the emission, like um, you know maybe you want these cubes to glow as the gradient passes over. That's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do a black and white ramp, right? Um, is that white? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So instead of feeding that into the color. Let's feed that into overall emission color. It's not gonna do much. If we go to our shader or our RS material and go to our overall section, you see the emission weight is zero. Just turn that up to like 10. There we go, look at that. Pretty cool. And then, you know, this is just feeding in black and white, right? So in the, you know, if I go to our linear field, white is on and glowing and black is off and not glowing. Since this is feeding into the emission color, if you wanted this to glow like a specific color, um, you can easily just turn this into blue. Just make sure this is like all the way, the, this value here is the amount it's gonna glow. Like imagine this being multiplied over your emission weight. Um, so let's say we want to, yeah, like a nice blue glow. And there it is, look at that. And, uh, and here's what I mean. If I turn this value all down, it's gonna start diminishing the glow. So if you want a colored glow, you just gotta make sure that this is all the way up. Or not, you know, it's your choice. And that's that. And then you can even get some really granular control in here. Like I obviously you can do more than a linear field. If I wanted to drop in say a random field, turn the color on that. And then we'll just go ahead and do another gradient. Uh, let's turn off the linear field for now, just so that we can kind of better see what's going on. Um, I'll just go ahead and crush the colors here. There we go. A little more obvious what's going on. So now we get some like, we can start controlling, go over to our field. So now we kind of have some really interesting control over the look of this thing. And of course you can blend fields and all that stuff. So I would throw on the linear field. We can start doing some interesting things with that. Let's say I wanted this to overlay instead of maximize, and then now the random field is only being applied to all the midpoint values. So 
you know, when it's one and all the way on, it's not being affected. And when it's zero and all the way off, it's not being affected. So now we can get a little bit of randomness as these things come on. So it makes it look a little bit more natural. But yeah, so that is how to use uh, MoGraph shaders in Redshift. I hope, uh, hope that helps someone out somewhere.